Hey guys, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and today we're gonna to talk about the Master and Dynamic MG20 wireless gaming headset. It's $450, which is not cheap, but we'll get into that later. Now, if you think that by the end of this review, this is the right headset for you, I'll have a link in the description below. That's an Amazon affiliate link. Doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does support the channel, so uh, we use that money to purchase other things that aren't sent to us. Uh, so we appreciate any support, if not, Get it any way you want. Now for $450, you get the headset itself. You get a USB-A to C charge cable, which is long enough to charge and use the headset at the same time. Praise Jesus for that. A lot of headset companies often give you like one foot jobs and those aren't long enough to actually use and charge. So it's braided, comes with a Velcro strap. I uh, love that. Then you get a USB-C to aux cable. The headset itself doesn't have an aux port on it, but it does support aux with the included cable. Again, long enough to attach to your PC. Uh, laptop, cell phone, controller, which we'll get into, uh, but it's that. Now it does come with a Y adapter, so if you have a, um, a PC that has the dual microphone and headphone jacks and not a combo port, which is what TRRS is, it does come with that in the box, and this too is braided. Uh, connection quality is actually really nice on that too. And then it comes with a uh, Bluetooth dongle, of course. This is kind of like the, the primary way you'd want to use the headset. Uh, we'll get into configuration and everything, but that's what's included in the box. You also get some quick start guides and a nice little sticker pack because who doesn't like stickers? I actually think some of them are pretty nifty, but I, I've never used them on anything. Either way, that's what you get. Oh, last thing, and there's a lot of cool stuff in here, but where do you put it, right? It comes with a amazing case. And uh, I say amazing because of a few reasons. It has a zipper pouch for all the accessories a lot of cases um, on a somewhat affordable level, I guess, if they even come with uh, cases on headphones, they often have just one pouch for everything and you just stick it in and it's cool, it does protect it, but this one allows you to keep all your stuff separate, which is gonna keep those ports, because USB charge ports, uh, anything with uh, power traditionally, can scratch up your headphone if it's in the same pouch. So I like that it's separated. Now, it also has these two little tabs on top. Let's get that into focus. It's magnetic. It, no zippers, no Velcro. Magnets are nice, they just feel like quality, and obviously with a $450 headset you want quality, but there is a separate dedicated pouch for the microphone. Put it in jack side down so the microphone sticks up. I found that that was like the easiest way to get it in and out. And then of course it's large enough to fit the headphones inside. No fancy material, this is probably like a light suede, it's a soft fabric material and the outside is more of a canvas, which should be pretty durable, but obviously it shows some lint. So either way, uh, you get a lot of stuff in the box. Now I mentioned the aux cable. When you consider the aux cable, this headset actually works on quite a lot of things. It works wirelessly on PC, PlayStation, and your phone or mobile device uh, because of the Bluetooth support. But with aux, now it opens up the door to uh, either, I guess you could still use it for aux on PC. We'll get into the latency differences, but this works with controllers or anything with a headphone jack. Super, super convenient. So even though this is marketed as a, a PC slash PlayStation gaming headset, this aux cable works brilliantly on Xbox. I actually use the Turtle Beach Audio Hub little controller add-on so I can get to gain the chat mix um, and adjust volume and mute on the controller itself. And it worked perfectly fine with that. So it's nice that you have aux because this means that this headset essentially works on everything regardless of uh, what the packaging states. Now, the other thing I wanna say about the aux, it is not a passive aux, which means the headset has to be charged and it has to be turned on in order to use the aux cable. Now, moving on to build quality, there's a lot to like here. Uh, let's start with the gliding adjustment because this thing is like they stuck a stick of butter inside the headband, it's just so smooth. And it feels really nice when you put it on. So when I adjust it, I basically shrink it to the smallest possible size, place it on my head, and then just pull down nicely until it's around my ear and I have a good seal, good to go. Now I talked about the seal. Ear pads, lambskin leather, which is one of my favorite materials on ear pads for a few reasons. One, and it's magnetic and detachable. Lambskin is nice because it has, it creates a really nice seal. A seal is important for sound quality and bass extension and get all that uh, sound that they want you to hear. Um, but the lambskin leather uh, breathes well so it's comfortable, it's very, very soft, your ears don't get as hot, it just feels good as soon as it touches your ear. It doesn't feel like a cheap material. Naturally, it's an expensive headset, so you want premium materials, and I'm pleased to say uh, lambskin leather on there is a huge win. It's one of my favorites um, without going into some crazy hybrid stuff, and even then, it's just a matter of preference. So this is very easy to clean. If ever wears, just buy a replacement, and it just, thanks to the magnet, just clips right on. 
Now going to the top of the headband, it's a metal headband. You can see the metal on the side, very, very durable and well-made canvas uh, on the headband itself on the outer lining. It's an interesting feel. It's the only spot where you feel the canvas. So there's some textural play here. You get the magnesium ear cups, which is metal. It's thin and light, very, very hard. And then it has a little texture on the ear cup itself, which is really cool. Now the inside of the headband is Alcantara, uh, which is you, you can see it on sports car dashboards. You can see it on some premium headsets, etc. Alcantara is nice. It usually doesn't hold well for uh, long-term wear with your hands, but as far as feel and res resting it on your head, um, it kind of wears in and it should look really nice even over time. It has kind of an accordion effect. So as you stretch it and put it on, it opens up. I didn't find the accordion effect or uh, I guess the bumps in the headband to be an issue. It's not really noticeable. And if anything, if you're the type of person that has a headphone stand with a single rod that holds the headphone, just line it up with one of those creases and that should help uh, maintain the pattern and the, the finish, if you will, on the headband without creating a crease or a dent. So overall build materials are really nice. I mentioned the magnesium. This brings the weight down under 320 grams. That's extremely light for any wireless headset, let alone a premium one that has such uh, high quality sound to it. Um, so the magnesium is really nice there. Now the headset is rotatable and has some pivot. It doesn't like pivot like crazy, but no one has ears, I guess, shaped that way when it's open. So it does pivot back slightly. And even though it doesn't rotate fully flat in this direction, it still contours well to you know, match the shape of your body. So you can wear this around your neck and because of the way the yoke is designed, it offsets the headphone outward, which means you don't feel the pressure squeezing your neck. So it is nice to wear around the neck. It also rotates the other way perfectly flat. So depending on how you're storing this, whether it be in the bag or laying it flat on your desk or whatever, you get a lot of rotation. And again, no noise, no creaks. It's just uh, overall made really, really well. So I like that for comfort and everyday use. Now, for those who wear glasses, I, I don't have prescription glasses. I use Gunnar's and I have thin frames and thick frames like these. Uh, I think these are, I don't even remember the name, the intercepts. So um, I try thin frames and thick to see how they feel. And lambskin leather, um, it's pretty supple, it's soft, and this has a pretty soft memory foam. Doesn't have a lot of initial uh, fight or pushback to it. So it does contour around your glasses. And I was able to maintain a really nice seal. Uh, it didn't hurt the, the base or sound quality when I wore glasses. So if you're concerned and you wear glasses, you're good to go there too. Now, as far as controls go, there's a few buttons on the headset. The left side has most of them. You have this volume adjustment wheel. This is the left side volume wheel is actually for your microphone gain. So if you wanna adjust how loud or hot your microphone is, you can do it there. Pressing the wheel in will mute or unmute your microphone. And then you have this 7.1 button. Now, what's interesting about this headset is it turns on with 7.1 enabled. So if you don't like the virtual sound, that's the only nitpick I had really with the initial turn on and, and sound tuning is uh, I'm not a huge fan of virtual surround. It does work well in some sources, so feel free to experiment. But when you turn it on, I just tap the 7.1 button and it turns it back off. Good to go there. It doesn't do anything else but enable or disable 7.1. Then you have the Bluetooth button, which is also your power button. Uh, if you, when this is off, if you press and hold it while turning it on, it'll put it in pairing mode so you can add additional device to it. I already talked about the USB-C port, which doubles as, again, your aux input using the included cable. Now there's a little LED below it. When you turn this on, if the LED is green, you have a high battery life. Uh, orange color is medium battery. And then if it's in red, your battery's low. Found that low kicks in right about the 30% range. And then you have, so you have a detachable mic, which actually has a really nice gooseneck. Um, to me, microphone placement, it's not like a deal breaker. Uh, it's more of an annoyance if the mic boom is too long or too cumbersome. I think that this is just right because it gets in a good spot to my mouth, but it's not in my peripheral vision or like right in front of my face. Some mic booms are really long, which is cool for adjustment. But um, to me, I don't like seeing it in front of me. It gets distracting. It is detachable. So if you're concerned with traveling, now you have a really good sounding and looking headphone um, that does everything you need on the go, minus the boom. There is an integrated mic. So when you're wearing this on the front here, you have this little microphone array. It does have an integrated mic, not obviously the best sound quality, but if you wanna chat while on the go, at least you have that support. Moving over to the right side, uh, you have your primary volume wheel, also somewhat clicky. So this one's more tactile, you can probably hear it little click sound. This one is softer, but still has a notch feel. Can't even really hear it. I'm sure the mic's not picking that up. And then you have an action button. Now the action button is 
when you're connected with Bluetooth, that's your play pause button. Skip forward a track, skip back a track, and then if you press and hold, it'll call up your assistant, Siri or you know Google's assistant, whatever you're using. All right, now it's time to talk about sound quality, which is my favorite part of the review, naturally. Now the MG20s follow the Harman curve more than most gaming headsets. The Harman curve is basically slightly U-shaped. U-shaped means that there's a little bit more emphasized bass and highs, and it rolls down slightly into the mid. So um, a lot of people prefer that because they like some bass and clarity. And as you get older, uh, the highs tend to get softer, your hearing changes, so they kind of boost that a little bit. Very young ears will probably want a flatter sounding headphone. So anyway, the bass is probably one of my favorite things about the MG20. It's rich, lush, dare I say sexy sounding bass. Um, it's just super, super present and a lot of a good bass can help with immersion. You know, if you have an explosion on a video game or a movie or you want that kick drum to just hit just, just right, um, I find that the MG20's bass response is absolutely phenomenal. It adds a little bit of warmth to the sound, but without bleeding into the mid so much that it's taken away, you know, precious details like footsteps or vocal clarity, stuff like that. So I think it's it's a really good balance. Um, to me, it's one of the best deep sounding bass headsets under $500, especially for gaming. I don't know if I've heard of a gaming headset that has better bass than the MG20. Um, it's not always about more or less because uh, everyone has a different preference, but it's just so consistent and it digs so deep. You know, your 20 to 40 hertz bass, phenomenal on the MG20. So if you're a person that likes deeper bass and not just that boomy mid bass stuff that's common on most gaming headsets, to me, that's where the MG20 shines the most. Now, because the bass is emphasized a little bit more strongly, um, and it's a brighter sounding headset. I'll get into the treble soon. I'm working my way up <laughs> the frequency chart. Um, but because the bass is a little bit more present and so are the highs, the mids may seem more recessed or laid back to you. Again, this is all preference. Now compared to, um, let's, be, let's face it, $500 price point or, or $450 price point, there's a lot of competition in that price range because you can get less expensive stuff. Um, the Penrose is a $300 headset to me has better mids. The mids on that headphone are phenomenal. They're perfectly flat, but it rolls off on the bass and it's a slightly darker sounding headphone so you don't have the same highs and detail that the MG20 has. The portals are the same way. The portals from uh, Bang & Olufsen, uh, fairly flat mid-range. Um, they have some little bit of a rise and fall, but overall it's pretty flat, similar to the MG20, but it doesn't have the same dynamic punch. It rolls off a lot below 60 hertz and then the highs uh, actually roll off as well. So to me, um, for what most people like in a gaming headset, you want that slight U-shape. You want the immersion from the base to help if there's an explosion in the game, like I said earlier, or you know, I'm playing a game like Ratchet and Clank, which is actually a really good sounding game, the new uh, Rift Apart uh, one for PS5. And you know, you're standing outside of a nightclub and all of a sudden they're playing some you know, EDM inside the club and the bass is just so deep and rich. And that bass from this headset just made it so much more enjoyable. I didn't even want to walk in right away. I'm like, this sounds pretty cool. So um, the mids are good, though. I find that tonally they are uh, really, really nice sounding. Male, both male and female vocals sound good. I'm able to pinpoint footsteps, no problem. So I think they dialed it in right. Even though this is more recessed slightly than the more present mids on the Penrose, um, I think it's excellent overall for uh, mixed listening and mid-range is usually where gaming headsets go wrong um, They have all this weird stuff going on with the frequency response and it just doesn't sound right It's more exposed when you listen to music it just doesn't sound quite right not the case here because these just play everything now Going into the highs the highs to me uh, is the There's more highs and than lows if you will like as far as a hit or miss on the sound profile These are a bit brighter sounding some people don't like bright. This isn't like DT990 Bayer Dynamic bright. It's not like super, super sharp hurts your ears. Um, you, some of the Steel Series even to me, and you turn them up and they just hurt. So some tracks, some music tracks, um, specifically poorly recorded hip hop tracks that so they boost the treble or certain rock music, um, I find them a little bit brighter than my liking personally, um, but you just turn it down slightly and overall it still sounds excellent. Now I'll talk about the EQ stuff later, but overall that's the sound profile. I think the treble is great because it adds a lot of detail for gaming. Again, primary focus is a gaming headset, but musically they sound phenomenal. 
Now I just want to touch on the 7.1 sound uh, briefly. I, I mentioned earlier when you turn this on, 7.1 is enabled. Not a huge fan of that, but you can quickly turn it off. The 7.1 adds some reverb to it. Now I'll pull up the frequency response and show you, um, which by the way, if you're looking at the chart now, the uh, in stereo mode, you can see what I'm talking about with the frequency. The bass is awesome. It comes up nice and high, pulls back a little on the mids, but stays relatively flat. And then at the 10,000 hertz range, it really uh, wakens up and that's where your brightness comes from. Now, when you turn on 7.1, it's adding some reverb and processing. And as you can see, it changes the sound profile quite a bit. Uh, the deep bass is a little bit pulled back in certain uh, areas. It has an odd notch in the lower bass. Um, but overall, I just found that it made the headset sound louder. And it, again, adds that echo effect. Depending on what you're listening to or what you're playing, it may sound better or worse. So experiment with it. I tend to prefer to leave it off because I just think these sound so good out of the box. All right, so now I'm talking to you on the MG20 microphone. Obviously not class leading under $500. You get ones like the Corsair Virtuosos. Those have phenomenal mics at the sacrifice of other things, but um, this is still passable. Now, because this is a Bluetooth headset, there has to be some give and take here. Bluetooth can only have so much bandwidth to send a signal to the headphone, and the more you send to it, the less you could send back. There's a, a bandwidth cap. So I like how they tune this because ultimately the sound quality of this is just ridiculous. It's so, so good. Um, but there has to be some compression to the mic and that's what you're hearing now. It's not podcast quality. I mean, you could use it, but it it's passable enough where it doesn't sound like a walkie talkie necessarily. There's also some background noise rejection that it does. So if you're worried about ambient noise or ambient noise, it doesn't pick that up as much. So this is the mic, that's what it sounds like. Now there's two other ways you can use the mic. I'm gonna detach this, you can hear the integrated one, and then I'm gonna hook this up in aux, so you can hear how this sounds in aux mode too. Okay, so now I'm talking to you on the integrated mic, and naturally the integrated mic will sound worse. It And from a proximity standpoint, because it's not near your mouth, you're gonna lose some of the warmth and detail. There's only so much it can do. It is still doing a good job of projecting background noise. Um, this is passable to use as a phone uh, phone call, you know, if you're taking a quick call on a bus or, um, you know, wherever you may be, it's serviceable. But at home, when you can use the boom, I certainly recommend it. As you can hear, it will sound better there. All right. So now I'm talking to you on the aux mode version of this headset. There is a noticeable improvement in sound quality. It's not a, a deal breaker when you're not using it. But if you're trying to get the best possible sound you can get, aux mode is obviously the way to go. And this is what people will hear when you're talking through a controller. So even though this does work wirelessly on PlayStation, if you want your mic to sound a little better, just plug it into the um, you know, DualSense controller and you're good to go there. All right, so now it's time to talk about the app. Now, this will be a quick part of the review because the app is uh, fairly basic. It's not as feature rich as something you see on the portals, but it is very reliable. Um, I've used it to do the firmware update. So if you're curious if yours has a necessary update before using it, just install the app and connect with Bluetooth. This app does work in Bluetooth connected to the headset while the headset is connected in Bluetooth to the transmitter. You don't have to pick one over the other, um, but anyway, so we're connected to the headset now. I'm gonna hit the settings wheel on the top right, and this is basically it. There's not a lot of changes. Now, I thought when it said customize EQ, you can actually adjust the five band equalizer. You cannot. So you have no EQ, you have eSport, which reduces significantly all that deep bass I was talking about earlier. So if you're concerned with that boominess uh, affecting your competitiveness on gaming, switch it to eSport mode. It's gonna lose a lot of the dynamics and the immersion that you're used to from the MG20, but it will focus primarily on like your mid-range and highs, just all detail. Bass boost, this thing has such strong and good bass out of the box. Um, I don't prefer the bass boost at all. I would almost prefer there was like a an effect that effectively flattened out the headset EQ so the bass wasn't as present and the highs weren't as sharp. But either way, if you find that you're listening to something that needs more bass, just switch it to bass boost and it will do that. Then you have an auto on off timer. The headset detects if you're wearing it or not. If you take it off and you're not playing anything or you set it down, this is where the timer kicks in and tells you uh, how fast the headset should turn off. And that's basically all there is to it. Um, the battery life on this, it showed it briefly at the bottom. It says 97%. I only recently just fully charged it for the filming of this review. It's rated at up to 22 hour battery life on Bluetooth mode to uh, my PlayStation or my PC. I was getting closer to 15 to 18 hours uh, on and off use. And in aux mode, you can get a little bit more. So just keep that in mind. It's safe to expect at least 15 hours, but you may not always get the 22, you know, depending on how you're using it. 
Now this says it has multi-point Bluetooth. I just want to clear this up. That's not the same as simultaneous Bluetooth. So if you want to connect this to two devices at once, you can't. Um, it will connect to two devices at once, but it'll only play one or the other. It won't do both. Now some people are gonna be concerned with latency. It's a Bluetooth headset. And uh, for those who are concerned about how this affects your gaming performance, you know, the competitive people out there, this is right on par with a lot of other wireless headsets. The latency of this because of the new Aptex low latency tech is about 42 milliseconds. That is about the same as the Logitech uh, G Pro X wireless. Um, so if you're con comparing it to that, that's a 2.4 gigahertz connection and this is just as fast. This is actually faster by about eight or nine milliseconds than the Corsair Virtuoso, another popular $300 or sub $300 headset. Now, when you look at the Penrose uh, headphone, for example, the Penrose is about eight or nine milliseconds faster than this one. Not a deal breaker, but it is. Same thing with the uh, SteelSeries Arctis Pro, another audiophile product. You know, eight or nine milliseconds isn't a deal breaker, but um, this isn't really off from what's considered highly competitive gaming headsets. So I don't want you to think and associate Bluetooth with this as being a, a, a major drawback as far as latency goes. The only wireless one that was significantly quicker was the Astro A50, but that's a, to me a totally different product on sound and, and the way it's used, um, much more limited in, in certain regards. So, uh, and then of course a wire near zero latency. So if you want this headset for all the good, uh, good things I talked about, but don't care for the latency of 40 plus milliseconds, just use the aux cable connected to your controller or PC and now you get all the good stuff about it without the potential latency drawback. All right, so at the end of the day, it's time to decide if this is the right headset for you. And to me, the big hitters that I would compare this to are the Penrose and the Bayoplay portals. I would choose this over both um, for a few reasons. You know, the Penrose to me has an excellent mid-range, but the long-term comfort and occasional bugs I had um, I prefer just to use the M220 because it always works. Now the portals were also extremely comfortable. They use the lambskin leather. They're really light. They don't have a mic boom and to me the microphone isn't as good on the portals as it is on the MG20. Um, that may come down to just if you need wireless for Xbox versus wireless for PlayStation. You know the portals are intended for Xbox. These are intended for PlayStation but they work on all platforms once you factor in the aux cable. I like the balance of everything the MG20 brings. It build, brings comfort, it builds, uh, brings build quality and style, sound quality is phenomenal, and it's just reliable. It works every single day. Now comparing to mainstream gaming headsets like SteelSeries, Turtle Beach, Corsair, there's pros and cons to different brands. I try to be very objective because you have to decide what's important for you. These are more expensive and you get a, a better experience. That's really what it comes down to. Now, if, is it giving you the best of everything at each price point? No. Um, but that's the same way a luxury car does that. You know, if you're looking for the best miles per gallon, you're not going to go buy a Lexus. You're going to buy a Prius. If you want ultimate luxury, you get, you know, Mercedes S Class or a Lexus LS. It's the same philosophy with luxury gaming headphones. You're getting more premium quality product um, packaging, if you will. You get the softer ear cups, the more exotic materials like magnesium instead of plastic. So you're paying a bit for that but I'm pleased to say it's not like this is so far over the top that you feel like you're getting ripped off. Some people wanna pay for a premium experience and that's what the MG20 delivers. So that about sums it up. I think a premium headphone should give you a trouble-free experience and although others can sound great for the money, the nuances or manufacturing defects or connection issues, that all plays a massive role in your experience. To me, a headset should just go on and you should then be able to focus on whatever it is you're trying to experience whether it's games, movies, music, you name it. The headset is simply a vessel for the journey or experience you're going on, and the MG20 is the ship I like sailing on. I don't know if that sounds tacky or not, but I hope that makes sense. They should just be a transparent thing. Put them on, forget about them, then enjoy what you wanna do, and not be like, oh, maybe if I fix this, or I can't believe this is cutting out, what the heck's going on? That says a lot, and I think that's where the MG20 just crushed it. I, I love this headphone. I'm really, really excited about it. I, I legitimately do use it every time I get uh, a chance to uh, when it's convenient. <laughs> so um, anyway, I hope you guys found this review helpful. I know it was really long, but there's a lot to cover with this because of everything it does and has, and I just want to educate you because it's a big investment. So if you found this review helpful, thank you so much for the support anyway for checking it out, but don't forget to like and subscribe. For those who already do so, I really appreciate you guys' support. We're about to break 10,000 subscribers. Couldn't be any happier and, and grateful for all the kind words you guys have given me in the past. So 
Um, anyway, thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye.